H-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Confidentially. <laughs> When I was a kid spending the summer in the country, my grandfather used to tell me about the country stores when he was a boy. He said he'd sit on a sack of flour and swing his bare legs while his mother argued with the storekeeper. Seems there wasn't a thing she'd take his word for, from a dill pickle to a barrel of crackers, and good old grandpa said it was sure something to listen to those arguments. Well, things have certainly changed. Today, there's no ground for an argument. When you go into a grocery store, you find packaged foods with brand names you recognize as your guarantee of quality. For instance, when you see the word Jell-O on a package, you know that here is a fine product, the real thing. Because that very name, Jell-O, is a trademark. It's the property of General Foods. If you hear any other gelatin dessert called Jell-O, that's incorrect, for there is no other Jell-O. And remember, Jell-O brings you that extra rich flavor, as tempting and refreshing as the real ripe fruit. So always ask your grocer for Jell-O. And by the way, this week, the National Association of Retail Grocers are holding their annual convention. And we want to send them congratulations and best wishes from Jell-O, America's favorite gelatin dessert. Confidentially played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being Father's Day, we bring you a man who is daddy to a polar bear, Jack Benny. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you're right. I do take rather a paternal attitude toward Carmichael. You know, that animal is like a child of mine. He's so affectionate. You're really very fond of him, aren't you, Jack? I certainly am. Believe me, we're going to have a lot of fun this summer on our trip to Alaska. Oh, are you taking Carmichael to Alaska? Yes, he has relatives in Skagway. <laughs> Two uncles and a sister-in-law, I believe. Huh? <laughs> By the way, Don, uh, what are you going to do on your vacation? Well, I haven't planned very much, Jack, but let me tell you something. When you see me next season, you're due for a big surprise. Well, what do you mean? Well, I'm going on a diet this summer and take off ten pounds. My, my. You'll never know me. Don, you could take 10 pounds off your lower lip and nobody would notice. <laughs> you know, when you go on a diet, you ought to try and take off about 50 or 60 pounds. Why, you'd even feel better. Jack, this may surprise you, but I'm not as fat as you think. What oh. appears to be fat is really muscle. Oh, oh. My stomach, for instance, is as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar. Oh, it is. Well, Don, I saw you playing golf the other day in nothing but a pair of shorts, and Gibraltar was out of bounds. <laughs> what a physique. Say, Jack. Yes, Phil? I wouldn't talk about Don's figure if I were you. I've seen you around your swimming pool, and you're no Adonis in a bathing suit. Oh, I'm not, eh? Your chest caves in, your stomach sticks out, and your legs look like they were tired of it all. <laughs> Well, Phil, you don't even have to get undressed to lose a beauty contest. You know, your nose looks like a pack mule with those bags hanging down each side. <laughs> and by the way, have you got your other bags packed for Waukegan? You know, uh, we're leaving tonight uh, right after the broadcast. I'm all set, Jackson. Gee, I can hardly wait to see all my old friends and pals. Yeah, I'm excited as a kid all week thinking about it. I can imagine. Where are we going to live when we get there, Jack? Well, you fellas are going to stay at the hotel Waukegan. So you, uh, you stopped there last summer, didn't you, Phil? Yeah. Oh, you'll love it, Don. It's a swell hotel. Very modern. Go on. They got a house detective there with a bow and arrow. <laughs> it was 
that so? And if you're not downstairs by 7 a.m., they send a maid up to see if you're dead. <laughs> well, that's because Waukegan is a wide-awake town. Everybody gets up early. Are you going to live at the hotel, Jack? Well, I'm not sure, Don. I'll probably stay with relatives. I don't know whether to live at Aunt Clara's or Aunt Molly's or Cousin Sudie's. They're all so anxious to entertain me. Well, uh, which one is the closest to town? Aunt Molly. She lives right over the elite Turkish baths. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she's a rubber there. I... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Oh, say, Jack, I just got a wire from Mom, and she won't be able to meet us in Waukegan. Well, I'm just sick about that. <laughs> What does your mother say? She says that, Dear Mary, we'll be unable to take the train to Waukegan as your grandfather, who was off the beam again, cut paper dolls out of the tickets. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe you can go to Plainfield afterwards and visit your mother and father. By the way, Mary, this is Father's Day. Did you send your dad anything? I sure did. I sent Papa some cufflinks and studs for his dress shirt. Dress shirt? Well, your father never wore a full dress suit in his life. He does now. He got a job with an escort service. Oh, <laughs> fine. Now when he takes Mom to the movies, he charges her 60 cents an hour. Well, it's worth it to go out with her. Anyway, Mary, I'm glad you remembered your father. That was a sweet thought. Not only that, I sent him the cutest card with it, and I made up the words myself. You did? What was it? Oh, Daddy dear, oh, Daddy dear, I send you cufflinks with good cheer. And when you hawk them, which you'll do, if you can't get five, go ahead, take two. <laughs> well, that's a lovely sentiment. He'll probably take advantage of it. Say, Jack, I sent a present to my father down in Tennessee that he'll be crazy about. I sent him a vacation outfit. A vacation outfit? Yeah, a hammock, a jug, and a fly swatter. <laughs> Well, he's all set for the summer. What does your father do in the winter, Phil? Same thing, only we give him a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... That's the life, I suppose. Take it easy and don't worry about anything. You know, it's kind of nice that Dad gets a break once a year. I sent my father a pair of leggings. Oh, is he still with Western Union? No. <laughs> <laughs> He wears them when he goes horseback riding. Say, Jack, do you know what I sent my father for a present? Yes, Don, I know how many flavors it has, so don't get cute. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Oh, hiya, Kenny. Say, Kenny, are you all set to leave for Waukegan? You know, we're going, we're going right after the broadcast. Oh, sure, I got my suitcase downstairs on the sidewalk. On the sidewalk? Well, for heaven's sake, bring it in. Somebody's liable to steal it. Oh, well, don't worry, nobody will touch my suitcase. How do you know? I printed J. Edgar Hoover on it. Well... <laughs> That's very clever, Kenny. How'd you ever happen to think of that? Oh, Kid Baker has a flash once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you have it that. Now, Kenny, when we get to Waukegan, I want you to be on your best behavior and make a good impression. You know, I don't want you whistling at the girls like you do here. Can I wink at them? No. <laughs> you can't whistle and you can't wink, so watch yourself. And now, folks... Can I wiggle my ears? No. <laughs> you won't show off at all. I want everybody in Waukegan to say, now there's a nice boy. And now, folks... I'd rather have him run me out of town. <laughs> Kenny. I don't want to hear another word about it. And now, folks, we will have a song by our fresh young tenor who's going to get his canoe paddled if he doesn't watch out. <laughs> now, uh, go ahead. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I just dropped in to wish you a very pleasant trip to Waukegan and to tell you that I'll miss you while you're gone. Well, thanks very much. Well, what are you standing there for? Ain't you gonna kiss me goodbye? No, I'm not! Get out of here! <laughs> He's the most affectionate lunatic I ever met. Sing, Kenny. me. 
This is the one moment that I thought I never could live through. But now somehow that is here, my dear, that foolish fear has gone away. And saying goodbye seems sweet. It's plain that fate didn't want us on a one. Don't worry about me, I'll get along. Forget about me, be happy, my love. Let's say that our little show is over and so the story ends. Why not call it a day, the sensible way, and still be friends? Look out for yourself, should be the rule. Give your heart and your love to whomever you love. Don't be a fool. Darling, why should you cling to some faded thing that you see? If you can forget. Don't Worry About Me, sung by Kenny Baker. And Kenny, before I forget, I uh, saw your picture, The Mikado, last night, and I thought you were swelling it. You look great in Technicolor. Oh, I thought I was too darn pretty. <laughs> well, that oughtn't to worry you. Good looks never hurt anybody. At least it never hurt me. Can I say something, Jack? No. <laughs> Anyway, the Mikado was a swell picture, Kenny, and you were grand in it. The Mikado? Say, that's a Western, ain't it? That was our... <laughs> that was our musical director, folks. Phil, for your information, the Mikado is one of the most famous operettas ever written. No kidding. You're a fine musician, Phil. For you to pick up a baton and lead an orchestra is perjury. <laughs> Why, Jack Benny, you didn't know what the Mikado was yourself until you saw the picture. I didn't know what the Mikado was? Why, Mary Livingston, before we went into the theater, I told you it was an Oriental story. You told me Charlie Chan was in it, too. <laughs> All right, so I made one little mistake. <laughs> but Phil has no excuse. He's supposed to have studied music. That studying don't mean nothing. Why, some of our greatest musical geniuses never studied music. Name one. Abe Lyman. Oh, fine. <laughs> Lyman is worse than you are. He directs his boys with a rawhide whip. You know, funny thing about you and Lyman, Phil, you both started out as drummers, and now you both have your own orchestra. Proving what? Proving hooray for the red, white, and blue. It could only happen here. <laughs> That's what. Oh, uh, Jack, why do you criticize other musicians? You took violin lessons for 12 years, and all you can play is Love and Bloom. All I can play is Love and Bloom. What's the matter with Thanks for the Memory? What's the matter with Deep Purple? Nothing until you start sawing on them. <laughs> Listen, Mary, your opinion doesn't matter very much. If you want to know something, I've been complimented by Heifetz. Heifetz? Why, Heifetz doesn't even know you're alive. He does, too, because he tried to shoot me once. <laughs> It was at the Penn Theater in Wilkes-Barre. <laughs> so don't be so smart. You know, I don't like to pat myself on the back all the time, but there's one instrument I've really mastered. Well, I can make a violin talk. You certainly can, Jack. Thanks, Don. Why, many's the time I've heard your violin say, I'm proud to snuggle under the chin of a man who works for Jell-O. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> because Jell-O is economical, easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. You mean my violin even knows the flavors? Yes, sir. Well, isn't that amazing? This stuff is strictly for the kids. <laughs> it was pretty subtle, Baker, so go and sit down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from my talking violin to our last play of the season, 
Tonight, the Benny Run Do Not Walk to the Nearest Exit Players <laughs> will present for your amusement, approval, and edification that stirring melodrama of the gay 90s, Lavender and Old Laos. Now, I will play Lavender, and our maestro will be the rest of the title. <laughs> now, in this play... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, boss. This is Rochester. All right. What do you want? Well, I just finished pressing your clothes for the trip, and I don't think you ought to take your white flannels with you. Why not? Well, you know that trouble I have with the toast every morning. Yes. Well, the same thing happened to your flannels, only I can't <laughs> Rochester, did you burn a hole in my new white flannels? It ain't my fault, boss. It's that cheap material. <laughs> cheap material? What are you talking about? I paid $45 for those pants. $45? Yes. Is this you, boss? Yes, it's me. <laughs> and don't act so surprised. By the way, is Carmichael all ready? I think you're making a mistake taking that polar bear to Waukegan. Well, I'm gonna leave him, I'm not gonna leave him in the house by himself for two weeks. He'll get lonely. Why don't you rug him? <laughs> rug him, Rochester, I'm getting tired of these constant threats against Carmichael. Now put him in that big packing box and take him to the station. I can't put him in that box, boss. Why not? I'm talking from there now. <laughs> You're in the packing case? Well, for heaven's sake, where's Carmichael? He's sitting on the lid. Oh, my goodness. If I had a long pin, I'd dethrone him. <laughs> oh, stop playing with that animal and finish packing. And by the way, Rochester, I'm taking my violin with me, so don't forget it. Doggone, I looked high and low for that fiddle, and I can't find it nowhere. Oh, well, I suppose it never occurred to you to look in my violin case. I did, boss. Well? There ain't nothing there but four strings and a fat termite. <laughs> now, don't give me that. The violin is around someplace. Now, get everything together. My trunks, bags, Carmichael, violin, and hurry down to the station. Okay. Can I take a taxi? What's the matter? Have the buses stopped running? <laughs> Now hang up and get going. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Doggone, if I could get $3 a head, I'd quit this job. What? What did you say? Didn't I hang up? No, you didn't. <laughs> well, here goes. So long, boss. The guy is always complaining. <laughs> Never saw such a guy. Now he wants to ride in taxi cabs. Oh, well. Getting back to our play, the opening scene... Say, Jack, I don't think we're going to be able to do our play tonight. Look what time it is. Oh, yes, the train leaves in about 40 minutes, and we got to get downtown. Where do we leave from? The new Union Station. Phil, have you got your car here? Yeah, I'll have my guitar player run us down. Oh, you mean Happy Bolivar? <laughs> well, that's swell. Come on, Mary, we'll be late. Well, wait a minute. i got to kiss the orchestra goodbye. Put down that piano player and come on. <laughs> so long, boys. See you at the station. So long, so long, Jack. So long, so long. Hit it, man.
stick close to me, everybody. I don't want anyone missing the train. I'll call the roll. Don Wilson? Here. Mary Livingston? Oh, Jack, stop acting like a scoutmaster. Well, I'm trying to be systematic. Hey, Kenny, get a load of that blonde. Wow, what a doll. Ain't she something? Hiya, babe. Hello, Kenny. Why, Kenny, do you know her? Yeah, that's my Aunt Rosie. Well, she ain't my aunt. Wait a minute, Rosie. <laughs> Bill, come back here. You'll miss the train. Oh, Don, take a look around. See if you can find Andy in Rochester. Okay, Jack. Gee, I don't know where they are. All aboard. Train leaving on track three for Santa Monica, Santa Clara, Santa Anita, Santa Barbara, and Santa present to your dad. It's Father's Day. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, he's a topical announcer, I'll say that Hey, Kenny, Kenny, where's your suitcase? Somebody stole it Somebody stole it? Well, that's awful What are you going to wear on the train tonight? You haven't got pajamas or anything I'll lend him a pair of my pajamas, Jack Just give him the uppers, Don He can use it for a nightgown <laughs> And tie a bell around his neck He might get lost Yeah Oh, this is too complicated I'll sleep raw <laughs> Sleep any way you want to. I don't care. Say, Mary, I'm going over and buy the tickets. I haven't got them yet. Okay, Jack. I'm going to get some magazines. Meet me here. All right. Well, let's see. Where's the ticket window? Oh, here it is. Pardon me. I'd like to buy seven tickets to Waukegan. Waukegan? Uh, that's in Asia Minor, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's in Illinois. I want seven round-trip tickets to Waukegan, Illinois. Why don't you buy one way? You might like it there. I know I like it there. It's my hometown. But I gotta come back here, I'm in pictures So was I, and look at me now <laughs> Well, that's your tough luck Now hurry up, I gotta make a train Okay, here you are And oh yes, I want berths I want four uppers and three lowers Well, you know, the lowers are higher than the uppers I know, I did that in Bordeville 20 years ago <laughs> So don't start that routine Just give me the berths Here you are Thanks Gee, what a guy Have a nice trip, deadpan <laughs> Deadpan, he wants me to laugh yet hmm. All aboard oh. Train leaving on track 16 For Louisville and Bowling Green Nashville, Knoxville, Vicksburg 2 And all points south on the choo-choo-choo <laughs> That guy has more fun than the Ritz brothers <laughs> Now, let's see, where's the magazine stand? Oh, there's Mary now. Hey, Mary. Yeah? Uh, did you get your magazine? Uh-huh. I got look, pick, click, and cluck. <laughs> oh, cluck. That's that new one, isn't it? Yeah, it's got Kenny Baker's picture on the cover. Well, that ought to sell a million copies. Come on back there with me, Mary. I want to get a book. Okay. I want to get something light, a good mystery or something. Uh, why don't you get Ferdinand the Bull? Ferdinand the Bull isn't a mystery. He is to the other bulls. <laughs> I'll pick out my own book. Now, here we are. How do you do, sir? Now, how do you do? I'd like to get a book, please. A real good mystery story. Yes, sir. Have you read Phil Harris and his gang or Murder at the Wilshire Bowl? <laughs> no, but I get what you mean. Say, Jack, uh, here's a swell book, and it's a special. A special? What is it? The Range Came and an Umbrella for two fifty. <laughs> oh, that's by Lewis Brownfield. He's a little too deep for me. Say, buddy, what's your best seller here? Well, our most popular book is Twenty Four Hundred by Kansas Junior. <laughs> Funny, I never heard of that. Why, it's very popular. He also wrote Twenty Four Hundred and the Life of Amos and <laughs> oh, never mind. Come on, Mary. Wait a minute. Why don't you take this one, Jack? What's that? Ralph Fram did it did by George P. Slumpum. Now, don't you start that stuff. Hey, buddy, just give me a Saturday evening pose. There you are. Come on, Mary, let's go. Now, buy any kind of pose. Hold it, please. Hold it, I meet the most unusual people. I wish Rochester would get here. He's making me very nervous. There's Don Wilson. Oh, Don! That's the information booth. I mean next to it. Uh, pardon me, mister. Oh, now what? Can you tell me what time the airplane leaves here for San Francisco? Airplane? I'm afraid you're going to have a little trouble, buddy. Airplanes don't leave from a railroad station. Oh, you're one of those wise guys that knows everything. I'm not a wise guy, but I know you can't take an airplane from a railroad station. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Board, airplane leaving on track eight. <laughs> 
Bakersfield, Salinas, Oakland, and San Francisco. Board! What? You see, you big smarty? Oh, go pin your hair up. Fresh guy. Oh, Jack, I found Andy. Here he is. Hiya, Buck. Well, Andy, I was worried about you. <laughs> Gee, you got a lot of friends at the station. <laughs> Are you all excited about going to Waukegan with us? Uh, yeah, but gee, I'm scared. I've never been on a train before. Well, you'll get a big kick out of it. You bring your pajamas? Pajamas? Doggone, can you sleep on a train? Why, of course, certainly. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Can you eat, too? Yeah, Jack brought sandwiches. <laughs> One more crack and you won't get any. Where am I? Oh, now let's get over <laughs> to miss my place at a station. Now, let's get over to the gate. Uh, how long does it take to go to Waukegan anyway? Well, Andy, we'll be on the train for two whole days and two nights. We will? Yep. Uh, say, Buck, do they have Yes, a... yes, don't worry. You'll be all right. Well, what are we going to Waukegan for anyway? Well, Andy, we're going to do our last broadcast from there. And besides, they're going to have the premiere of that new Paramount picture, Man About Town. Starring Jack Benny. Get it all in. Never mind. Hey, Phil. Phil, stick around here, will you? I don't want to have to look for you. Okay, Papa. Yeah, I wish Rochester would get here. The train will be pulling out in a few minutes. Well, it's your own fault, making him look all over the house for that violin. Why do you want to take it to Waukegan anyway? Because my old violin teacher, Charlie Lindsay, will be at the premiere. And I want to show everybody in Waukegan what he's done for me. Well, that's the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to practice every day on the train. Oh, Greyhound, where is thy depot? <laughs> Bill, if you don't like it, you can stay home. All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Grub Hollow, Possum Junction, Squirrel Center, Beaver Creek, Mud City, and Waukegan. Board! Oh, my goodness, there's our train, and Rochester isn't here yet. Yeah, I am, boss. Well, it's about time. Have you got all the stuff with you? Yep, trunks, bag, violin, and everything. Good. Where's Carmichael? He's buying the tickets. I bought the tickets already. <laughs> Carmichael, come here. Come on, gang, let's go. Okay, Jack, you got to go. Say, Rochester, I'm afraid to put Carmichael in the baggage car. He'll have to share a compartment with you. I don't want that animal in with me. He snores. Oh, what's the difference? You're only going to be on the train two nights. Well, if he snores the first night, the second night you can get a piece of him in the dining car. <laughs> you lay a hand on him and I'll... Hurry up, Jack. The train's leaving. I'm coming. I'm oh, coming. Oh, <laughs> It's not true that uh, nobody does anything about the weather. We've done something about it. We have the perfect recipe for those hot, sultry nights when nobody feels like eating. Jellied fruit made with shimmering, fruit-rich lemon jello, and here's what you do. Dissolve one package of lemon jello in one pint of hot water and chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in one can of fruit salad cut into small pieces. Mold until firm and serve as dessert or salad, either one. It's swell. Delicious lemon jello with that wonderful extra rich fruit flavor so tangy and tempting and cool. And molded firmly inside the colorful fruits, peaches and pears, cherries and apricots shining through the golden jello. It's grand to look at and to eat and easy to make. So ask your grocer tomorrow for some lemon jello and try this new summer recipe, jellied fruit. <laughs> That was the last number of the 38th program in the new Jell-O series. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from my hometown, Waukegan, Illinois. Well, Andy, are you thrilled being on a train for the first time? I sure am, but say, Buck, ain't it dangerous going through that Indian country? Oh, no, Andy, I've been through it a hundred times, and I haven't been scalped once. You'd never know it. Is that so? Good night, folks. <laughs> Appears on the Jello program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. Don't worry about me, it's from the Cotton Club Parade. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.